Finding the right pulse shapes is uh, very important for your quantum experiments and getting to highest gate fidelities. Hi, I'm Andreas and today I will show you how lab -on q can support you in defining your pulses and pulse shapes and then also refining them. I'm using one of the example notebooks out of our collection. You will find the link to it and to all other resources below that video. Before we start, we import everything that's important for LabOnQ and define a simple device setup where we use emulation mode, which actually allows us to run everything without being connected to quantum hardware. And that also means that you could um, run the notebook straight away on your computer at home. We use a simple calibration and connect to our emulated session to be ready for the experiments. First, of course, we want to define a pulse. And here we use a drag pulse out of our pulse library with a length of 400 nanoseconds, an amplitude of 1 and a drag parameter beta of 0.3. That's our X90 pulse. To find the right energy of our X90 pulse, we want to sweep its amplitude first. So we define an amplitude sweep, starting at 0.1, ending an amplitude of 1 with a count of 5. Now we can put both pulse and amplitude sweep into our experiment, where we first use an acquisition loop in real time, and then a sweep loop that tells LabOnQ that we want to sweep amplitude, the amplitude sweep parameter. In the play command, we want to play the X90 pulse defined above on a signal line called drive with an amplitude defined by the amplitude sweep. After defining which line actually is what we call drive, we map it, we run the experiment and we can have a look at the simulated output of the instrument and we see indeed a parameter sweep of five steps where the amplitude of our drag increases from 0.1 to 1. Blue is the real part, red is the imaginary part of the pulse. However, once you have found the right energy, you might want to sweep um, advanced parameters, such as the drag parameter itself. And that's easily doable by defining a new amplitude, uh, a new parameter sweep, which we call sweep beta. And we sweep beta from zero to one, again in five steps. The experiment structure basically stays the same, but this time we don't sweep the amplitude, but beta. And in the play command, we can do that by using this Python dictionary um, the, as the pulse parameter argument. Again, mapping the signals, running the experiment and looking at the outputs. It is what we expect. We have a constant real part, but the amplitude of the imaginary part of our pulse is swept from low to high. You can do that with all of our pulses that we provide in the pulse library. It's uh, plenty now. You can simply check it out yourself. Sometimes, however, you want to have sample precise control over your pulses. Say you want to define a NumPy array and then play exactly that array. And you can do that, of course, as well by defining sampled pulses. It can be done as is shown here, we define two pulses for illustration, one that is purely real and has 1024 samples, and the other that is complex and has 128 samples. We sample actually random numbers, because I don't have better data at hand now, and define the pulse, first the real one with the real, complex num uh, with the real numbers, and then the complex one with I and Q data. Now these pulses are ready for use, uh, you have noticed they don't have any parameters, such as the drag parameter, but we can still sweep amplitude or phase of the pulses. And we do that in this experiment. We define an amplitude sweep that goes from 0.1 to 1, and a phase sweep that goes from 0 to pi over 2, both in five steps. We include the sweeps in our experiment, run the experiment and look at the output. And it is, as expected again, for the longer pulse, the, which was the real pulse, we see that the phase slowly transitions from zero, purely real, 
two imaginary um, 90 degrees in step number five. And for the complex pulse, we see that the amplitude is increased linearly here. This gives you full control over your pulses as you would want to have it for optimi optimal control, for example. On the other hand side, you have to have the sampling rate of your setup in mind if you do things like that. Levon Q provides you with a way of defining your pulses parameterized so that you don't have to think of the sampling rate of your setup again in a very general way. And I'll show you how this is done on the example of a flat top Gaussian. The basic structure of defining your own pulse is you receive an x-axis as a NumPy array which ranges from minus one to one. It's always the first argument in the function you define. The result of the function is your mapping of the x-axis to the pulse shape uh, you want to have in the end. Also, you can define as many parameters, additional parameters as you want. In this case here, we define the relative length of the flat part of the Gaussian. If the relative length is zero, the flat top Gaussian becomes a Gaussian. If the relative length is one, the flat top Gaussian becomes a rectangular function. After initiating the result vector as um, a NumPy1 array, we can replace the left part with the left part of the Gaussian curve and the right part of the ones with the right part and end up with a flat top Gaussian pulse. Now you have to decorate it so that Levon Q knows that this is a valid pulse library object and this can be done by the Pathanic at pulse library dot register pulse functional. That's all. Now you're ready to define your own flat top Gaussian pulse um, by simply calling that function you defined. And of course, you can also sweep any parameter you've additionally introduced to that function. In this case, of course, it's the absolute, uh, the relative length of the flat top part. So we define the linear sweep parameter here going from 5% to 95% length. Again, the same experimental structure. We sweep the relative flat top length and use again the Python dictionary to um, give that argument to the play command. Running the experiment and looking at the result gives us um, this plot where the first pulse is really nearly a Gaussian with a very, very narrow flat top. Then the flat top grows until the pulse is nearly a rectangular pulse. That's all what I wanted to show you today. You can find all resources on our GitHub or manual. Links are below. If you have more questions, please reach out to us.